Right in front of me, my friends, is everything we need to build one behemoth of a machine. We have the 28-core Intel Xeon W3175X, Gigabyte's C621 Aorus Extreme Motherboard. Look at the size of this thing. We've got two Radeon 7 graphics cards, 384 gigs of Corsair Vengeance memory, a Silverstone ST1200. This is a 1200 watt power supply. Look how small it is. And well, we're still figuring out some of the other things, but that's fine. This is the foundation. So this is like a rockin' epic build all on its own, but don't wipe the drool off your chins just yet because this whole thing gets even better. This right here is going to be our case. That's right, my friends. This, all of it, is going into what promises to be the fastest Hackintosh of all time. And clearly, um, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. What's not a challenge is that today's video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet is a sleek way to keep Wallet Bulge down with its compact frame and RFID blocking inner plates. Use offer code LTT September to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. Let's start with what we're trying to accomplish here. Apple's new Mac Pro release is fast approaching and we wanna beat them at their own game. So I challenged my team to build a computer that beats what Apple is going to ship this fall. Now, what makes that complicated is that in addition to sheer speed, I want our machine to match as many of Apple's features as possible. So that is where our motherboard choice came in. The Gigabyte C621 Aorus Extreme wasn't chosen by accident. We went with it because of how many PCI Express slots it has. So this board is gonna take not just our dual Radeon 7s, but also a piece right here that I didn't talk about in the intro. So this is Asus's Hyper M.2 X16 card. This holds up to four M.2 SSDs and it's single slot. So what we get then is if we water cool our Radeon 7s and install this, we take up a mere three of our seven PCI Express 16X slots, giving us still anywhere from three to four slots left over for future expansion. One area where we did have to compromise though was on system memory. Apple's gonna offer up to one and a half terabytes of RAM on the new Mac Pro, thanks to Intel's refreshed Xeon W CPU lineup. But our processor, the original Xeon W here, only supports a maximum of 512 gigabytes of RAM. And due to motherboard compatibility restraints, we didn't even manage to end up with that much. Now the good news here is that we still have 384 gigs of RAM from Corsair, which is still enough even for most hardcore workstation users. And the benefit that we get from this trade-off is potentially some overclocking, which may give us a measurable performance advantage over Apple's hardware. You know, it's crazy. One of my friends had a Power Mac G5 back when that thing was current. And I remember looking at it and going like, wow, that's like a huge computer. Now I'm looking at all the stuff I need to pack into this thing and I'm going, dang, this is not a lot of friggin' space in here. And making matters worse, as a bit of a throwback to the original G5 Mac Pro, we are gonna be water cooling this rig. And uh, that is one of the big things that we're going to try to figure out today. Like we've got some rough ideas for how it's all gonna go together, but in order to validate it, we need to do a little bit of testing. So for the motherboard, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, we're gonna go with the same inverted mount that Apple favored back in the day. So our IO is gonna be down at the bottom, exactly where it was on the original computer that was in this case. But obviously the back panel is gonna need to be completely redesigned because Apple had it all in single file like this and they only had 
four expansion slots and obviously we're gonna have a total of seven. So that's gonna need to be reconfigured. It would be really nice if we could still retain the original side panel latch, but if we can't make that work, then that is something we're willing to compromise on. The power supply mount is where things already start to get wonky. So Apple already had one of those pass-through um, power things here. So the plug is at the back and then there's gonna be a cable that has to go into the actual um, outlet on the back of the power supply. But instead of orienting it in an obviously sensible way like this, where all of our modular cables could come out on this side, uh, what we're actually planning to do is go like this and then run all the power along the back of the motherboard tray to get to where it needs to go. The reason for doing it that way is that it may end up being the only way that we can fit in all of the radiators that we're going to need, which I guess brings us perfectly to uh, all the radiators that we're gonna need. So we've got a couple of different options. Either we're gonna end up with dual 120 millimeter radiators, or we're gonna end up with a single 360 and a 240. So it all depends though on whether we can get a 360 to fit into the front of this chassis. One thing's for sure, we are not gonna end up with an optical drive. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is all gonna have to be ripped out and then we may get a fan in here, but we're definitely not plugging in any SATA devices right here. And there may not be a ton of room for the, check this out, dual 24 pin power connectors on this motherboard. So our other rad ugh, is gonna go right where you see it and the motherboard's actually gonna come right up here to the top. So theoretically, ugh, all of our PCI Express slots should be accessible. Now pump and reservoir, we haven't actually finalized yet. It's very unlikely that we're gonna end up with a res this big, but I think the hope is to have the res kind of live up here or something, and then maybe whatever expansion card that we need, like uh, if we wanted to run 10 gig networking or something, maybe we could find a half height one that we that we take for granted is gonna be installed in that slot and it goes under the res or something like that. We might just end up with a smaller one. And then for our pump, uh, we're fairly committed to using a D5 pump just for its reliability and quiet. We would like the machine to be quiet, uh, but we're not 100% sure where that's gonna go yet. I mean, it could be as simple as chucking it down here or it could not. Uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah our fantastic underwear, lttstore.com, but that has nothing to do with this build. Ah, good. So this is one of the single slot water blocks that we're gonna be using for our Radeon 7s. These are from EK, they're super sexy, they're super, more importantly, single slot, and that's what's gonna allow us to do, I mean, well, one, two, four Radeon 7s. We're gonna go with two, just because we're not sure about having enough cooling capacity for more than that, but uh, hey, two's not half bad. So the thing about radiators is it's really easy to get caught up in test fitting a radiator and going, yeah, it fits. And then you go, oh shoot, I need another 25 millimeters for the fans that need to go on it. That's what I was a little bit worried about here in the front. But you can see once we pull this optical drive out, that may actually give us the space that we need to squeeze this in. See that? How it kind of fits at the bottom, but not at the top. I think we might actually be all right there. So we'll need low profile water cooling for the VRMs. Um, we don't even need low profile water cooling necessarily for the CPU, especially if this is up another two or three inches. This actually might be feasible. And you know what, for the reservoir, if we made a custom bracket that hangs off the cross brace that's built into the original case, we might even be able to do like a shorter res and then like a res pump combo or something like that and save ourselves some space for cable management and like routing the power in and stuff over here. It looks like this might be feasible, but you guys have probably figured out by this point that it's gonna take a fair bit of custom fabrication in order to make this work. So instead of banging our heads against a desk, um, you know, making things and then seeing that they don't fit and making them again, we decided that 3D modeling everything would be a good idea. That'll allow us to do preliminary fitment of everything without having to use up valuable time fabricating and refabricating. It also lets us check clearances to make sure that we are able to plug in all of our cables and manage them the way that we want to. 
So our friends over at Excelsior Measuring wanted to help us out. So we actually, we brought them a Mac case to use their measuring tools on and have them give it a shot. The problem though, is that they generally work at a much different scale, scanning things like buildings and such. So due to reflectivity issues, we actually haven't gotten anything usable from them, even though we did follow Daniel's suggestion and actually paint one of our mat cases flat black. Um, so if we want to do a fancy version of our model later, we might actually try uh, gray, which was the next thing that they suggested, but um, it's just time to finish up our sanity check here. So the last thing I want to do today is get you guys a pretty realistic look at what the finished system is going to look like. So I got a couple spacers in here that I'm just going to chuck in the bottom of the case to show you where the motherboard's going to end up. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. That managed to fit. Okay, sweet. And then, like I said before, the power supply is probably going to go in a little something like this. So what our cable routing is going to look like is you can actually see, we don't have to have the motherboard right back up against the tray there. So I'm gonna have some room, I'm just gonna pull this fan out for now, it is a tight fit. But I'm gonna have some room to run behind the motherboard tray to get to where I need to go. And then this is gonna sit up. So it's gonna sit up on something probably about this high. And then it's gonna all be shrouded so that you can't see the cables until they emerge where they need to plug in. And really, there's not gonna be that many of them. There's two eight pins that are gonna go down in the bottom of the motherboard here. Two more eight pins that go here. 24 pin here. And then we've just got PCI Express power for our graphics cards. That's basically it. Uh, we don't have to plug those in. Those are optional. We've only got two cards. It should be okay. Um, so yeah, we can go ahead and throw this guy in here. Um, we're not sure yet what our water cooling solution is gonna be for the motherboard. Um, Bits Power has a block, but EK might actually do up something custom for us. And if they do that, that would be flipping awesome because then we could control where the inlet and the outlet are, um, which might help us lay out our loop a little bit more efficiently. Um, in a perfect world, we'd love to hardline to bit, but honestly, we might need the flexibility that comes with, well, flexible tubing. I'm just gonna go like there, 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 over there. And then this one would kind of come you know, it's not going to be the prettiest thing ever. Definitely not, not Apple worthy in that sense, but you can see kind of the outline of what it might look like. Like it's all very, very plumbable. There you go. Yeah, this really kind of is the definition of fitting 10 pounds of crap into a five pound bag. I wasn't kidding when I said this is going to be a challenge, but fortunately, it looks like every problem that we have is going to be overcomable. So guys, get subscribed so that you don't miss part two, which is gonna be Linus Tech Tips, Hardcore Case Modding Edition. We all have our everyday grooming routines from showering to brushing our teeth to yes, shaving. No matter your routine, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to help you look, feel, and smell your best. A lot of you have probably heard of Dollar Shave Club and think they only stick to shaving products. Well, don't let the name deceive you. Dollar Shave Club can solve all of your grooming needs in one box. Yes, even those ones. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, butt wipes, and obviously shaving products. They've got all of them. And basically, if you have a body, they got you covered. If you're an AI, they're working on it. Not only do they ship them right to your house, but the more you buy, the more you save. The Shave Starter Set comes with the executive razor with six high quality blades and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter. Join the club with one of their starter sets for just five bucks. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular price. Get this deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus today. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm yelling. So thanks for watching guys. See you next time. This is gonna be freaking awesome. Let me know in the comments if you're psyched, cause I certainly am.